Hello everyone, we're live. We are in the historic city of Ronda in Andalusia in Spain. And this is the very final holiday Thursday Q&A. So for those of you that are um, new to this this week, thinking who's that guy with the really long beard who sat in the garden talking DJing? These aren't normally sat in a garden with long beards talking DJing. Well, we normally talk DJing, but these are normally from our studio, from the Digital DJ Tips studio. But I've been away with my family for two months now, uh, touring all around the place in our camper van. But every Thursday I've been cracking open the laptop, finding a 4G connection somewhere and going live in order to continue our tradition of helping DJs and DJ producers to get better, which is something we've done every Thursday for years and years and years now. We're live on Facebook, we're on Twitch, we're on YouTube, and next week we'll be back in the studio. Uh, it will all be back to normal as if none of this has ever happened. So this is the final holiday Thursday Q&A live with me, Phil Morse. Now look, as ever, if you enjoy this, please do make sure you become the latest member of Digital DJ Tips. And you can do that by going to digitaldjtips.com slash join. Uh, and uh, we'd love to have you as our latest member. At the school, it's totally free. And there's loads of good reasons why you should do that. But rather than going into those today, let's go into the comments because this is what this is all about. It's about helping you guys and girls improve as DJs and DJ producers. And I, as the founder of the school and as the person behind many of our 25 courses, have got decades of knowledge, which I'm just dying to share with you on all areas, gear, music, techniques, playing out, promoting yourself, whatever your questions, I'm here to help. So hello, firstly, to uh, my co-owner of the company, Steve, who just wrote first. There you go, Steve, eh? First comment on a YouTube video. You're such a, that's the word I'm looking for, pioneer. pioneer. <laughs> the production team is saying behind me. Uh, hello to Kevin and John, Mixmaster G in the Netherlands. Ryan, GM, DJ Pac-Man, who says, Happy Friday Eve. I like it, Pac-Man. I like your style. Uh, to Luis in San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, to uh, You Don't Like My Music, who wins for the best name on our channel. Uh, I don't know if any of you saw the dog attempting to jump up behind me there, but she's tied to a very tight leash and therefore makes it impossible. So you get the, uh, get, the get the idea. If you saw it, it should have been going like that. Oh! Um, but anyway, uh, all the fun of being out and about and not in the studio. Modish Mark says, hope the holiday's going well, Phil. Well, we're nearly finished now, Modish Mark. Right, we've done the early hellos. Let's get stuck into your questions. The first one is from Ryan. Ryan says, hi, Phil. I just had a question. I'm looking for a small DJ controller for just doing ceremony music. I'm wondering what you recommend that has a great sound card and at least two mic inputs. So the thing with DJ controllers that are small is they tend to be underpowered. And so you can get a DJ controller that's small and light, like the Mixtrap Pro FX or the Pioneer DDJ 400 or something, but they haven't got the good mic inputs. They're not professionally built. The sound cards aren't very good. They're very plasticky. Finding something small that also does the job as far as professional build quality goes and mic channels and all the rest is quite hard. And the one I would recommend to you is the Roland DJ707M. Now the Roland DJ707M is a Serato controller. It's pretty small, but it is really probably one of the best featured controllers out there. It's got four channels. It's actually got a built-in sequencer. Well, it is rolling, isn't it? But more to the point, it's got all the mic channels you want. It's got a zone output so you can send music to somewhere different from where you're actually DJing. It's got um, the ability to EQ the whole output of the unit. Now, for a mobile DJ, that is solid gold because it means that if you're plugged into a PA system in a room where it's just too bassy or whatever, you can tweak that on the controller for everything. So you're not having to do it on the actual mixer controls. It's basically the M in DJ707M stands for mobile because it's been designed for mobile DJs. It is easily the best small controller for professional mobile DJs in my view. So if you're after something small that can do that job, that is probably a good one to go for, Ryan. Um, so I'm sure we'll have other suggestions as we go on today. We're here until a quarter to the hour. It's five past the hour now. We're here till a quarter to the hour answering. So I'll try and get as many uh, questions and answers in. But, you know, a little later on, we'll start seeing people answering the questions that we are answering ourselves here now. And I'm sure we'll get some more input for you there, Ryan, over on Facebook. So a comment from Jermaine, who is on YouTube, who says, Hi, Phil. I just wanted to thank you and the team at Digital DJ Tips. I had my first gig. It was a friend's barbecue and it was a total success. And I was able to book two more gigs from that one party. Brilliant, Jermaine. Well done, my friend. That's what it's all about. You will have learned more from that gig than we can teach you in a month of lessons. Because 
part of our job is to get people in front of audiences once you're in front of an audience it all starts to make sense so listen you've done it well done and got two more gigs booked as well i mean that's just 100 percent total success you've got right there so well done um, hello to uh, DJ Skojo69, one of our small but fervent bunch of followers over on Twitch. Um, hello to Rob and Adrian and uh, and uh, Ryan says, wow, that's what I was thinking. Oh, there we go then. Uh, so Johnny, afternoon uh, and same to you too, Johnny. Always great info here. We do try. Uh, so this question is from You Don't Like My Music, who says, I have Wi-Fi troubles on a rooftop set. Uh, I use iRion Cam on my iPhone and it won't work. What's a good cheap wired alternative? Good cheap wired alternative. Well, look, just to put it into perspective, we have used Wi-Fi. We haven't used Ethernet at all for the last two months. And I've done 13 different broadcasts from literally all over the place. Countryside, town, city middle of nowhere, little villages, and Wi-Fi has never been the issue. So if your issue is Wi-Fi, I would try just moving nearer to the router or moving the router nearer to you to start with. I mean, you can use Ethernet adapters and Ethernet is better for live streaming for sure. But honestly, in my experience, you shouldn't need it. So maybe a little bit more info, you don't like my music on what the problem is. Um, because I think it's probably solvable without having to, you know, I think the problem isn't the Wi-Fi. That's what I'm trying to say here. So let us know a bit more info um, and maybe we can help you a bit more there. Uh, DJ Skojo says, just use an external mixer for mic inputs on a small in inexpensive controller. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, you know, so you could just use them um, back to the mobile disco type controller. You could just use a, a small like a Yamaha six channel mixer, you know, these little $80 things. Uh, and you could actually plug your DJ controller into that and you could plug your mics into that as well and the output from that to your PA system. And that way you could have the extra mic inputs you need and so on. Uh, but if you've got the money, you know, why not get a pro controller that you can be proud of and that looks the part and, and that is better than, than using a, a kind of consumer controller. Uh, hello to uh, Kulfen Garen, who's in Sweden, uh, who says it's rainy there. Well, you are in the Northern Hemisphere, or rather the Northern part of the Northern Hemisphere, I should say. Uh, it's uh, it's summer, isn't it? That's summer for us North Europeans. Uh, Pepe, um, uh, important controller like me, NS6IO, has got volume problems with external channels of the mixer. If I plug my phone in, it has a low volume. Uh, right, okay, so what I would do in that instance, in all honesty, is turn the gains down on everything else until until everything else balances the lowest input on your controller and then just turn the master up. You know, um, you depending upon what the output is from your phone, what brand of phone, you might have a lower signal, uh, but that's just how it is. You know, the point is, if you can get your lowest signal as loud as possible and then use the, the gain or the level controls to balance everything else to that and then get your final volume output to get the final level that you want, that's kind of what gain controls are for. That's what this kind of thing's for, Pepe. So uh, that's what I would do first. Uh, here's a really, really good question. I love questions like this. Remember, I, for those of you that know Digital DJ Tips and know that what know what we do, you'll know that we're behind a book called Rock the Dance Floor. So if you head over to the Digital DJ Tips website at digitaldjtips.com uh, and look at the book, uh, you will see all about Rock the Dance Floor. There it is. Uh, this is the best-selling book on Amazon on how to DJ. And it's one of the things you get from us when you become a member of Digital DJ Tips, which is why I keep saying, you know, join, join, join us. It's free. Um, and you can do that there. Um, but in the book, what we discovered is that the best way of teaching DJing um, is to teach the five big areas, which is gear, music, techniques, playing out, and promoting yourself. And one of the things that is important is of course music because without music you ain't a DJ uh, and this question uh, addresses that kind of uh, that, that angle uh, really uh, and so I like this question we don't get enough questions like this so thank you for this one from Aaron who says do you think DJs should have solid knowledge about music and the history of music to be able to produce music or is just being a DJ enough knowing mixing phrasing music flow etc and the answer to the question there is uh, Aaron uh, I don't think it hurts but I think a lot of the best music has been made by people who didn't get hung up by not knowing everything about music before they started making it, right? Because it's, it's a big weight to carry. It's a big albatross around your neck, the whole history of recorded music before you start trying to make anything. So I would say, you know, if you want to make music, the most important thing is to start making music and make music every week and every month and every year. But then at the same time, learning where the music comes from, learning the roots is all part of the fun. So, you know, you're going to find your own flavor and you're going to find your own style by absorbing what's gone before, but not not being 
stopped by it, not being held back by it. So the first, you know, 100 tracks you make might be, oh, wow, I've just discovered disco, I've just discovered, you know, progressive rock, or I've just discovered whatever. And now I've made a track that sounds a bit like that. By the time you start realizing that you've actually got quite a good musical knowledge, all of those things will have fed into those 100 tracks you've made until that point, and you'll be starting to get a sound of your own. But if you wait till that point to make your first track, all that time wasted, uh, and again, you probably just won't start because you'll think well, it's all been done before or some other kind of like non-helpful uh, uh, mantra in your head that's holding you back. So definitely start making music. Uh, and it is important to know phrasing and mixing and music flow and so on. Uh, but also, you know, any doesn't matter whether you're making music or not. Any DJ, any person involved in music surely has got a desire to learn where it came from, to learn the influences, to learn what came first and what came next and so on, whether you're making music or not. So you should do that, but don't let it hold you back, uh, would be my answer to you there. Uh, hello to Roman in Prague. Uh, hello to Alessandro in Brazil and to Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Thanks for being with us on the live stream on Sunday, which was an awful lot of fun. Really did enjoy it this week. It's very, very hot. Uh, hello to Sir Sicily, who is uh, in Russia, not in Sicily. Uh, hello to Tyler, who says, Phil, I was wondering what you'd suggest to do uh, to figure out what music would be best for me to DJ with. I've heard a good way of seeing what kind of music makes you jump around. I've noticed that outside of DJing, underground lyrical hip-hop gets me dancing, but behind a controller, that changes. And I seem to be static, not dancing, in other words, regardless of the genre I'm playing. Tyler, I think you're overthinking it, my friend. The most important thing in DJing is to get yourself DJ gigs. And whatever is wanted at those DJ gigs, play that. Uh, and then, you know, as you start to establish yourself and as you start to learn what gigs you like and the crowds you like and people ask to book you again because you happen to do a good job at that gig or they don't ask to book you again because it really wasn't you and you all knew it you'll start to you'll start to figure out where you're going with this don't try and rush it it was a bit like my uh answer to aaron a bit earlier you know you you can't learn the history of music in one click you can't learn the kind of music you want to play in one click so play everything um we call it the dartboard approach you know throw your darts at the whole dartboard of gigs that are available or music that's available in the end you'll start to work out the areas that are best for you but i wouldn't rush it and i wouldn't overthink it the most important thing is to do it get dj gigs you know don't 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 sit at home thinking about it get the gigs um so this is from Johnny, who says, I use OBS with an iPhone on Wi-Fi for streaming. It works well most of the time, but sometimes it slows down, then goes all Benny Hill and speeds up. I can tell you're from the UK. Any ideas why this would be happening? It's probably because your iPhone can't handle the um, what you're asking it to do. So I would try rebooting your iPhone before you even start, reducing the resolution that you're broadcasting at. So if you're using 1080 on OBS, go down to 720. If you're using 720, go down to 480. Um, and that will free up some CPU time in your iPhone and that will allow it to be more smooth uh, because what happens when it slows down and speeds up is that there's a bottleneck in the in the cpu in your phone basically it can't keep up with what you're asking it to do by the way when you're live streaming don't get hung up on resolutions you know one thing i've learned we're about to publish an article on digital dj tips called 10 things i've learned um, live streaming out and about over this summer and it's all the lessons i've learned in the last couple of months one of the things i've learned is you've got to respect the bandwidth you've got now bandwidth is how quickly you can get your signal out to the internet but also bandwidth can mean the cpu bandwidth in other words how much power you've got in your computer and those two things will decide how fancy your live stream can be and one of the things that makes it fancy is going up to hd and then going up to you know um um even higher than that, what's it called? Four something or other, I can't remember. Um, but, you know, going up to 1080 plus resolution is really not necessary when you are live streaming. For instance, this live stream now, we're on a reasonable, reasonable 4G connection here, about half bars. So we're nowhere near full bars on our modem. Uh, and we arrived here about 10 minutes ago. So I had no time to kind of like get up on the roof and experiment with a better signal so i just i just knocked it down to 480 which is 480 lines that way on the picture you're seeing it's not the be best picture in the world right but it'll do and if i switch back to the the website you know you can see all the information i want to show you fine right and this is a very this is standard definition this is old school tv kind of definition we're looking at now so don't get hung up on resolution you know do what's possible on the device you've got and if you're on an iphone and it can't cope then just knock the resolution down in obs now talking of the website let's just have a little look at what's going on in djing right now because it might trigger some questions that you want to talk about uh, we've got an article that went live yesterday five settings you haven't touched on your dj gear 
but maybe should. Uh, and this is a great one. This is the kind of things that might just make DJing easier for you and you might never have looked at them. So go and have a look at this uh, at this if you want to know more about things like latency and quantize and setting the hot cue behavior and the type of sync you're using and pitch range and all that kind of stuff. Um, we talk about all that stuff there. Uh, we've also got a couple of news pieces which are quite interesting for Rekordbox users. You've got a new unlimited cloud storage plan uh, which is a nice thing to consider if you're a bit of a power record box user and also for mixed cloud users they've done some pretty pretty big improvements to the way mixed cloud works for live streaming so you can go and find out more about that there as well uh, so that's what's been going on, on over on digital dj tips over the last uh, few days digital dj tips has been on half speed all summer uh, and we like it like that we like to take a little bit of a breather in July and August when it's really hot where we are. We love the Mediterranean. That's where our HQ is. Uh, but we're going to be back next week with absolute full speed. And by full speed, I mean kind of faster than ever. Uh, we've got a really, really big announcement to, to make uh, on Wednesday coming up. So do keep an eye on your email inbox for that announcement. Probably the biggest announcement without me bigging it up too much. Uh, we've ever made in the history in the 11 year history of digital dj tips i'll go on then i will big it up but it's true so do make sure you're on our mailing list digitaldjtips.com slash join we'll get you on there because we've got a huge announcement and um people who sign up once we tell you about this thing we'll we'll get stuff that everyone else doesn't so it really is worth being on that mailing list and believe me you come back you come back next Thursday and tell me off for overhyping it if it wasn't as big as I say it was. That's all I'm going to say. So, uh, so Digital DJ Tips will be back in full swing uh, with uh, with everything. Back to our Tuesday uh, our Tuesday Tips live show. Um, even more editorial and stuff, but also a uh, couple of announcements in the next six weeks. But we're a really, really big one next week. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, right. So back to questions. Um, so uh, this is from Pitch Connects in Cambodia, who just says, what's up? Happy Thursday. Venues are still in lockdown here, but I cannot wait to get back out there. Well, we wish you the very best of luck there, and I hope your venues unlock very soon. Um, so this is from Rafi, who says, is there an active sound processor that automatically controls output sound levels and keeps them even? So I'm presuming you're talking about when you're DJing, you want the output sound level to stay more or less level if you accidentally go a bit louder or a bit quiet. So I'm going to come at this at two angles. Angle number one is you should make any circuitry that does that do as little as possible because what it's going to do is reduce the quality of the audio that reaches your audience. Your job as a DJ is to ensure that the volume is the same from all of your sources, microphone, your decks, anyone else you're plugging in, so that you, no other circuitry has to do anything else to help you. So this is where the gain controls come in. So you've got your channels, right, on your DJ mixer, uh, and you've got the filter, then you've got low, mid, high, and then at the top, you've got a gain, a little level. And the idea is that all your inputs, you balance with that before you even mix them in, and that keeps everything level. And so you've got to work at this. Um, in Digital DJ Lab, our subscription program, we've got a whole course just on what's called gain staging, which is how to do that. But look, you don't need to take a course on doing it. It will help, you don't need to. Just make sure that before you mix something in, you turn that knob so that the level is high, but not in the red, uh, a, a loud part of what you want to mix in. Job done. So the first part of answering your question is, you know, try and make any circuitry you've got that's balancing what you do and making you sound better, do as little as possible. Is there anything that will do it for you though? Well, yes, there is. So. I think all DJ software, but certainly most, has what's called a limiter built in. And this will, when you're going too loud, it will limit it. It will take the very loud bits and make them quieter. Now, what this has the effect of doing is squashing the audio. So the loud bits and the quiet bits are closer to each other. And that's what I mean by reducing the quality. A little bit of that is okay. It's a production technique. Too much and it starts to be tiring on the ears. So if you have a limiter on your DJ controller, you can set the limiter quite low on your DJ software and it will kind of do a bit of that for you. And there are rack mounted things that you can put into your PA setup if you're a proper touring event DJ with your own PA rig and stuff called compressors and limiters which will actually do all this stuff for you and they can be very useful if you've got a lot of inputs and you know there are going to be times when there are bits that need to be made a bit louder or made a bit quieter but really you want to avoid doing that stuff and certainly for day-to-day -day DJing um, best to avoid it entirely just to try and get your mix right in the first place that said 
the Roland DJ 707M controller that we were talking about just a little while ago has got compressors and limiters built in. So there's another reason, if you want that kind of thing, for going for that controller. It's an underrated controller, that one. This is from uh, Queso, who just says, Hey, Phil, what a good-looking beard. Yes, it's a love-hate thing with my team and my beard, I'll tell you, uh, and my family, but <clears throat> I grew this for fun over the uh, holidays. I'll be shaving it off next week and getting a haircut so that I'm ready for all the stuff that's coming but it's been a lot of fun growing a big beard over summer so um dj kluby just says david bellamy in the undergrowth there you go you brought me back down to earth haven't you dj kluby um apparently there's no audio a few of you are saying ah oh, i know when the audio went it's when i shared uh oh no actually my, maybe it was just michael um yeah it was just michael right okay there we go uh yeah Right, so um, let's get some more of your live questions. Uh, this one here is from um, Sarah, who says, Hi, Phil, any tips for nice transitions in a very chilled out open format mix, e.g. R&B, reggae, hip hop, etc., old and new? BPM range is too wide to beat mix and dropping on the one sounds too harsh. So a lot of music in those genres has got a fade or it's got a nice slow end to the track, right? So you can just count the one and drop in on the imaginary one at the end of the track, right? So that's not gonna to sound too harsh at all. You can use a very slow echo. So you can have an echo out that will just echo out at the BPM of the track you were playing. And again, you know, one, two, three, four, drop it in next. Um, reverb will work as well. Um, but for me, it would either be dropping on the one, because I don't think that's an issue at all if you get it right, um, or one of those things. You know, the truth is if you're, if you're playing those kinds of music, if you're playing R&B, very chilled reggae, hip hop, you're probably playing to a bar audience or you're doing a very laid back live stream and you can play records end to end. You're more of a selector than a DJ in those circumstances. Yes, if there's an obvious way of mixing, you're going to mix. Another thing, another nice thing to do is just to mix in key. So if you know that you can get a track in the same or compatible key, then just blending the end because they're in the same key can just sound amazing because you're blurring the consciousness of where the tracks are ending and starting. Um, I love playing that kind of music because you can deviate from always being on the beat and you can try some of these other things. Um, you know, if a new track starts with a vocal, let's just say a new track starts with three words and then the music kicks in. Well, look, you can start that wherever you want after the old track because as soon as the singer sings the first word, everyone's going to be listening to that. They've forgotten the old track. So there's no need for mixing. It's more about saying, what can I play next that complements what I just played? And so you become more of a selector and you become a little bit more of someone who's being sympathetic towards the order you're playing stuff in, but it's not really about beat mixing. I love playing that kind of set, I always have. Even at the height of playing clubs, I used to always hold down a Sunday night gig um, because to me, it was the best way to kind of come back down to earth after the weekend to go and play chill out music in a nice cozy bar on a Sunday. Um, it's always been my thing. So I, uh, I love that kind of stuff, Sarah. So good luck. Let me know how you get on. Uh, this is from... Um, this is from Johnny, who just says, thank you. I'll appreciate, I'll look into that from the question earlier. Uh, this is from Liam. Uh, I'm about to buy a Pioneer DDJ 800. I mainly play extended chart mixes and club classics. Do you recommend any alternatives? What, you mean alternative DJ controllers? DDJ 800 will be absolutely fine. As long as you're happy with two channels, um, no, you've got a really good controller there. Um, so no, no alternatives. I think it's a great choice. Uh, I wouldn't look any further. Uh, the next one is from Darren who says, um, big thanks to yourself and Steve on your course Pro Mixtape Formula. I learned so many tips and tricks with Audacity and Ableton. I've created a few quality mixtapes from vinyl and controller mixes I've since done. Well, I'll be editing one of my longer mixes to a 15 minute mini mix very soon. Oh, well, thank you very much for that. Um, and for those of you that don't know what Pro Mixtape Formula is, um, it's a course that we have, um, Come up with a digital DJ tips to help you make mixtapes. So if you go to DJ courses at the top of our website and then click down to uh, the deep dive courses, specialized courses here, you'll find one of them is Pro Mixtape Formula. And what this teaches is how to make mixtapes. Now, you might ask, why would I want to make mixtapes? Well, watch this video. This video will explain everything. Uh, but it teaches you how to make mixtapes, how the pros make them. Now, uh, my um, co-owner of the company, Steve Canueto, he worked for about 15 years at Ministry of Sound when they were producing the million-selling compilation albums. In fact, he was the one editing the million selling compilation albums, you know, the annual and the clubber's guide and all that stuff. And Steve learned how to make mixtapes the way that they should be made 
So you are actually mixing it yourself on your decks and recording it, but how to cut out all the mistakes without having to go back to the beginning. Sounds like something you can't do. Sounds like something impossible. It isn't. And that's what that course teaches. It teaches you how to mix and get it right first time or rather not have to keep stopping and going back to the beginning. And then it teaches you to take that kind of rough version, turn it into a finished version. And as we were talking about there, make mini mixes from it, make it fit whatever format you want. Uh, and then we go further and teach you how to publish your mixes and get, get people to listen to them and use them to get gigs and all that stuff. So the course is Pro Mix State Formula. So that's what Darren's talking about. And Darren's um, figuring out how to use Audacity in Ableton, which is the two pieces of software we use in there. Audacity is free. Obviously, Ableton is paid for, but we teach you how to do this on both of them. Uh, but the mix itself, you will do on your own DJ gear and your own DJ software, which is exciting. It's, you know, you hear of DJs doing mixes on Ableton, but it's boring uh, and you hear of DJs you know wanting to do DJ mixes on their gear but you know it takes them six months because every time they get near the end they make a mistake and have to go back to the start again we kind of blow all that out of the water and show you how the pros do it so that's what that course is about and thank you very much Darren I'm glad you enjoyed it so this is from Snailden who says hi Phil I typically do not use key lock because whenever I do it tends to generate some level of distortion on the playing track is there any way to prevent this if you are using Serato and you haven't bought Pitch and Time, you haven't bought the Serato expansion pack that's called Pitch and Time, that's why. Serato's built-in key lock is rubbish. So you're gonna to need to buy that expansion pack. Uh, once you've got that, it's gonna sound great. You know, the key shifting algorithms on all DJ software nowadays are really, really good. And if they don't sound good to you, they're never gonna sound good to you. So no, there is no way, but I suspect just a rough, just a, you know, a wild guess. You're using Serato snailed in and you haven't got pitch and time expansion pack. And that's probably why. Uh, the other way of avoiding it is not to move too far from the original key. So, you know, you can move one note, which is one semitone or maybe two from the original key. But any more than that, it is going to sound pretty rubbish, pretty rough. Uh, so, um, Cool. Let's move on to the next questions. Uh, Queso, are you going to be attending NAM in January, Phil? Probably not. It'll be the first time in a decade that I have not attended a NAM that has been on. Um, but the whole COVID thing has basically forced a bit of a rethink. Uh, and I don't actually like jetting all around the world to go to music conferences. Um, I'll probably go to somewhere in Europe this uh, coming year, to a conference in Europe somewhere instead. Uh, so no, I don't think so. Don't think I'll be attending NAM this year. Never say never, but at the moment, I, nothing's telling me to do it. Nothing in my soul is saying, take 10 days out of your life in January, which is also where my birthday is. Go away from your family, go to the other side of the world and, uh, and um, hang around in a conference hall. Maybe I'm just getting old. Uh, so Martin, I've fallen into the habit of not using the prepare window in my DJ software. Any tips for making sure I stop winging it when I'm mixing? Yes, pack a playlist for every gig you play. If you haven't heard this advice before from me, people, listen up. Every time you play a gig, pack, pack a playlist or a crate with twice the number of tunes you're gonna need. If your gig is an hour, and you typically play 20 tunes in an hour, put 40 tunes in a playlist. And think about every single one of them. What's my plan A? What's my plan B? What's my plan C? Have I got enough vocals? Have I got enough instrumentals? Have I got enough new stuff, old stuff, underground stuff, stuff people like, stuff for the girls, stuff for the boys, slow stuff, fast stuff. Get that playlist ready so you're pretty sure whatever happens to that gig, those 40 tunes mean you can play a really good hour. And you'll only ever play half of them, but that's cool. Now, if you do that, you don't need prepare windows. You don't need to do anything else. All you've got to do is look through those 40 tunes every time you put one tune on. Look through all 40, choose the next one. Look through all 39, choose the next one. Look through all 38, choose the next one. It's not so many tunes that you're going to be staring at your screen forever, but it's enough to give you choices. That is how you appear to the rest of the world, like you know your, your music collection inside out and that they're just flying out onto the decks and you're having the time of your life is preparation. Now, I'm not saying only take that music with you. Of course, you're going to have the rest of your collection there for stuff you forgot or stuff that people ask for, whatever. But if you play from a playlist and not from your main library, you don't need to do anything else. So that is my biggest piece of advice for anyone who's like, you know, how do I prepare for a gig but not over prepare? 
So uh, our next live question, by the way, ask your questions with hashtag ASK, hashtag ASK. Um, if you uh, want to be sure of me seeing it, because at this point, there's too many questions for me to see. Uh, and by the way, the best place to follow these and the best place to ask questions is on Facebook. We're on YouTube, we're on Twitch and all that. But the best place to do it is on Facebook because the questions stay underneath the video afterwards. So my team and I can get to you afterwards. Um, and the only other thing I'd like to ask while we're just uh, taking a little break from reading the questions out is if you find this useful please do hit that share button sharing this is the biggest single thing you can do for us getting the word out there to other people that we do this every week thank you very much um so the next uh, live question uh, is from uh, pitch connects who says anyone been using ampify amp fee amp fee is that what you mean amps great for djing and producing anyone anyone heard of them well clearly i haven't anyone else can you help uh, Cheyenne, any news on any new interesting controllers coming out? Let me think. Obviously, I can't tell you anything that isn't in public. There is one new DJ device coming out that I've heard of between now and Christmas. It's pretty big news. So, as always, keep an eye on Digital DJ Tips for it. Uh, but I can't tell you anything more at the moment. Tips for mixing out when you're playing slow music. Low pass filter with some echo, Sarah. Uh, so, there you go. There's another thing to try. Uh, so Mike says the new Tractor S2 or the S4 Mark III would be better. The S4 Mark III Mike for sure. How do you export iTunes playlist to Virtual DJ? You just don't. You just play from them in Virtual DJ. Virtual DJ can show you your iTunes collection uh, and just play them directly from there. There's no need to do anything else at that point. Uh, so um, Mike... Uh, I just answered that question, Mike, so that's cool. VCI or VCL says, it's my birthday. I need help. I have all my experience on the NX, NXS2 Pioneer gear at Pirate Studios, but I want to practice at home. What controller for record box would you recommend? Around $500. Good question. You might want to go for the FLX or the Flex 6, which is about that price. It's got the same jog wheels or similar jog wheels to the ones you are used to. Apart from that, it's a pure entry level controller, but it is laid out similar to the Nexus 2 stuff. Other than that, uh, you know, I'd, I'd pay double, double that and buy a DDJ 1000 if it were me. If you want four channels or a DDJ 800 if you want, if two channels is enough and pay a bit more because record box controllers that are anything like the one you're used to the nexus 2 system don't exist at 500 dollars as i say that the ddj flex 6 from pioneer it feels a bit like the pro gear but it isn't pro hasn't got the pro audio quality hasn't got the pro inputs and outputs it's plasticky it's it's basically a you know it's a cheap car with a with a spoiler kit on it it's the best way of putting it uh, you're best off buying something that that's better full stop. And I'd go for a DDJ 800 or a DDJ 1000 instead. I'd even go for a second hand DDJ 1000 over a brand new Pioneer DDJ FLX6 uh, VCL. So I hope that helps you. Um, or is it V and L? V and L. I don't know. My eyes are getting old. Anyway, G Pi. I'm having trouble figuring out how to hear the music before everyone else does on my Tractor Control S3. Your controller has got something called pre-fade listen or Q. They're the little buttons underneath each channel. Press the button for what you want to hear. Put your headphones on and make sure that the other couple of controls that control that are set. You know, depending upon, I'm trying to think, remember how the Control S3 works. Uh, there'll be a control that says Q master, make sure that's on Q and make sure the headphones volume is turned up and then you'll be able to hear what is coming through the channel that you've pressed that pre-fade listen or the Q button on uh, and that's how it works. The only reason it might not work like that is if you haven't got the audio settings right but as long as you set tracks are up properly when you when you um, installed it and you told Tractor that you had the, the S3 controller, that's how it works. Um, so uh, hello to Steve. Hope you're well too, my friend. Um, DJ Pac-Man says, just spam the air horn sample to mask when you're blending. Yeah, nothing says chilled out DJ set like an air horn, right, DJ Pac-Man? Um, Dave says, come on, Phil, admit it. You're hiding the new Pioneer DJ controller in your beard. Well, go on. Now you've, you've got me on the spot. I'm not a good liar, am I, unfortunately? 
Um, so Ray, when I get Ableton Live, will I need a MIDI controller? And if so, which one do you recommend? No, you won't. You know, we've got courses that teach you how to produce uh, and we recommend that you don't get a MIDI controller when you are using Ableton Live. Why? Because it's one more thing to learn uh, and you don't need one more thing to learn. Ableton Live is hard enough. So um, there's a couple of... Um, a couple of courses I want to push you towards uh, that if you are thinking of getting Ableton Live and you're interested in learning any kind of production, you're going to want to take a look at. So let's start off by looking at this one here, Layback Luke's Bootlegs, Mashups and Re-Edits. So this course is for you if you just want to start making edits of records, you want to make your own bootlegs, you want to make mashups, but you're not quite ready to start producing yet. And in this course, Layback Luke teaches you how to do just that with, a with uh, Ableton Live. Now, you only need the $99 version of Ableton Live. Uh, we give you 25% off any, any version of Ableton Live anyway. So, you know, it'll cost you $75 for that version, but also 25% off any of the others. Just for signing up for the course, we'll give you that. Uh, but in this course, Luke will teach you to do those things. But also, if you decide, you know, actually, I want to produce music, uh, then we've got what's called a complete course. Now, our complete courses are big courses these are these will take you a few months to complete um, and one of them is called dance music formula and in dance music formula our tutor joey will show you how to make proper dance tracks from beginning to end and by proper dance tracks i mean tracks that are good enough to release on beatport and spotify and so on and they'll even show you how to get your tracks on beatport and spotify and so on so this is really worth your while if you want to take production seriously again you, you can be a beginner you don't need to know anything about music production to follow this course but it will take you that much further than the luke course actually this is a great follow-on to the luke course so that's what we've got to help you do this stuff um and yeah have a look at it see what you think um but as far as your question is concerned um no you don't need a midi controller in fact we recommend that you don't get one uh, because it's as i say it's just going to complicate things unnecessarily for you uh, people we have about five ten minutes left to go here before i am going off to enjoy the last few days of my holiday before getting back to the studio uh, next week uh, where as i told you earlier we've got the biggest announcement in 11 years of digital dj tips history coming up on wednesday next week and as i said to you earlier if you're not a member of digital dj tips you really do need to be a member because you won't hear about that announcement unless you are so in order to become a member of digital dj tips just go to djtips.co slash join or digital djtips.com slash join they both take you to the same place uh, and then we can let you know all about that so uh let's get some more questions from you this one is from tom who says, uh, Yamaha PA speakers for mobile DJing. I find them to be very harsh at the top end. So much I have to use my mixing desk to take a load of treble off. Anyone else found this? Any other recommendations? Well, using your mixing desk to balance your PA is a good idea anyway. Uh, adding a subwoofer might just allow you to take the volume down a bit on your bit on your mid and top speakers, which again will just give you a fuller sound. Uh, positioning is a big thing with speakers. Have you got them on stands? How have you got them in the room? Uh, but if anyone else is a Yamaha PA speaker user, and Tom, it'd be useful if you could say which Yamaha speakers, uh, maybe have a chat with Tom on our YouTube channel uh, to talk about that there. Um, um, cool fan Garen says a lot of controversy around Ableton nowadays around Audacity nowadays Audacity is the free open source software that lets you edit music it's not really it's a it's a storm in a teacup if you look deeper into all that internet stuff that was going on about it there's not really much in that to be honest with you um, cool fan Garen but um, I won't go into it here because it's boring basically but uh but nah audacity is still good uh so dj joe i just did a gig and i dj'd in a very unconventional way newly subscribed to dj neural mix pro and i dj with my ipad pro and jbl party box 310 i'm having so much fun with this dj software oh that's really cool you know dj software nowadays is moving on so quickly and the technology you're using that lets you take the vocals out or isolate the vocals or take just the drums or just the music is incredible but also just djing on whatever you want i'll tell you a really funny story this is going in the other direction like going away from technology when uh, my wife who just handed me a beer so she's still in the good books when my wife and i um got married uh, a long time ago now uh we hired or hired we we, we cajoled my, my my friend james uh, into doing the music for us we wanted like an, an 80s themed um uh, music music and we, we we knew the songs we wanted playing and i didn't want anyone beat mixing 80s stuff or trying to be a hero dj i just wanted the right songs playing and i gave james guess what twice the amount of music that he needed for the gig uh, and said mate just play what you want out of that lot and he played 
half the music I gave him and he said that was great I could play what I wanted but guess what I wasn't there staring at the screen all the time you know we, we practice what we preach James was DJing with a laptop but he didn't have laptop software on one side an iPod on the other side a wire from each into a really cheap mixer and a PA system we'd hired uh, why would a DJ get another DJ to DJ on gear that's, that's like that because I knew for the gig it was enough and I knew it would make him just play the music and sod the mixing, which is exactly what he did. And he, and because I know he's a great DJ, he played an absolute blinder. So I'm really up for DJing on whatever you find fun, whatever you find amusing. I'm just trying to move this because the sun has literally come out behind my head as we've been talking. But then again, we've only got three minutes left. So I'll, I'll let my halo carry on. Maybe I'll make it bigger. There we go. Look at that. People, I've had an epiphany. Someone screenshot that and send it to us had an epiphany people shall i just look up wow dj on what you want that's the epiphany right now um so i have the original mixtape pro course says Lou santiago and i've now got the revised course as well awesome thanks guys yeah whenever you buy a course from us if we make the course again you get the new version for free that's just the way we roll uh right so dj mark in the dark a nice name my friend i'm researching dj speakers i'm seriously considering ele electro voice i've seen pros and cons i'm hoping they'll be loud enough for weddings uh any recommendations well 12s are gonna have a 12 inch cone um small weddings i would say without knowing that exact model but certainly electro voice is a great brand so the brand brand wise you're fine you know the rule of thumb for dj speakers is you want five watts of output per person indoors or 10 watts of output per person outdoors now it's a really really coarse rule of thumb because it doesn't talk about efficiency of speakers and all that stuff but basically if you're playing for 50 people indoors a 250 watt pa system all else being equal should be all right if you're playing for 50 people outdoors you're going to want a 500 watt pa system if you just apply, apply the five watts per person indoors or 10 watts outdoors it will at least give you a ballpark figure so if you figure that out for what you're considering dj mark in the dark you'll know if you're in the right ballpark or not uh, right one or two more questions and then we are out of here a swig of my beer as well Oh, that's nice and cold. About 30 degrees here today, which feels positively fresh compared to the live stream on Sunday. The live stream on Sunday was so hot, everything, the router, one of the cameras, the iPod, the iPad, all just closed down. Said we're too hot to work. And uh, how we managed to pull that off, I don't know. But anyway, it's quite pleasant here today, actually. Uh, one or two more questions. Um, this is from GL Cummings. How do I hook up my turntables to my Behringer speakers? Um, DDJ 1000 Pioneer Record Box. The DDJ 1000 is all right. You can just plug it into the phono inputs. It's not the best, but that should work. See if that works for you. Um, Tom um, is talking about Yamaha speakers again. Um, ah, you've just cut and pasted your question. Just because I love you guys, I'm not going to tell you off, but please don't cut and paste your question over and over again. It just clogs up the questions and then I end up wasting everyone's time asking you not to do it. Um, I'm trying to find a way of connecting passive speakers through my receiver and ultimately into my DJ mixer. If possible, please help with this configuration, says Greg. Look, your DJ mixer needs to go out into your amplifier and then from your amplifier, your speakers. So basically, you've got it the wrong way around. If you've got an old fashioned receiver, which is like, you know, an FM radio and an amplifier, plug your DJ gear into that and plug that into your speakers. That's the way that's going to work, Greg. Um, so... Um, you don't like my music is admitting to overusing the gunshot the gunshot sample for a while great for clearing a dance floor not as good as a bit of tear gas but yeah i know what you're saying uh so um apparently v and l or vcl is pronounced vel so thank you for that vel who says perfect that's what i was thinking i'll keep my eyes out for a used 800 or 1000 over the flex 6 so i'm glad um yeah i'm glad we're in the same ballpark there yeah the flex 6 is is a great feeling controller but it is basically a ddj 400 with a spoiler kit on it uh, is not in any way any more professional than the, the, the basic entry level controllers which i think you're probably going to want if you're used to pioneer pro gear uh, my final my final question then of the day is from um this isn't a question actually so i'll read this out anyway because it's useful this is from eddie who says i'm a mobile dj primarily weddings i'm wondering if other mobile djs use a monitor for feedback depending on the venue acoustics sometimes all i hear is muffled bass so I started using a small 8-inch active monitor uh, connected to the booth output and it's made a world of difference. Yes, you know, I would say definitely always carry a monitor because even if your speakers are right next to you, 
they're not pointing at you and you want to be able to hear properly if nothing else just so you can enjoy the music you're playing so yeah you should always have a monitor speaker i agree um and our final question of the day is from it's always a little pause while i'm looking for the final question because i just want to find something which is a little bit different to what we've been saying uh, beforehand um this is I'm going to end with this because it just shows that we're a broad church here at Digital DJ Tips. You know, we've got, at last count, probably about 10 tutors across our courses. And one of our tutors is the biggest wedding DJ in the USA, full stop, Jason Janai. Uh, Jason doesn't like calculating the number of people when it comes to choosing speakers for types of events. He posted a rant video on his YouTube channel the other day, says Craig. Well, you know, my caveat was it's a starting point, not a finishing point. Jason is a stickler for detail and there's no way Jason would say hey I've got 200 people so I'm going to take a 1000 watt PA and that's enough thinking about the PA speakers for my event you don't pay the rates that Jason charges and expect that little attention to detail so no I totally agree but as a starting point five watts per channel indoors is a good place right people I'm back next week. You have got Steve Canueto on Sunday. Look at your watch. 15 minutes from now on your watch, wherever you are in the world. Join Steve on all our channels except Facebook, uh, where he will be playing his Sunday live stream, Sunday music slot. Uh, I'm back next Tuesday um, at 4 p.m. London, 11 a.m. Eastern with the very first not next Tuesday, actually, the Tuesday after, apologies, with the very first Tuesday Tips live of September. But I am back next Thursday, a week today, with the very first Thursday Q&A live back at our new revamped studio. We had lots of changes made in our studio. I'm looking forward to getting back there and seeing them for myself. So that's all happening next week. Keep an eye on Digital DJ Tips. Join Digital DJ Tips if you want to know all about what we're talking about, this big announcement we've got next week, next Wednesday, uh, digitaldjtips.com slash join. Uh, meanwhile, get good, get out there, make the moments, people. It's always a pleasure. I'm off to finish the last few days of our holiday, our family holiday, and I'll see you next week back in the HQ. Uh,